Thank you for uh, the introduction about the city. And uh, now, together with uh, Florian and uh, Michael, uh, an update on, uh, on the project as traditionally uh, we, have, we have been doing during the last, uh, the last conferences. We start from uh, a map of TDF members. Uh, these are the countries uh, where there are TDF members around the world. And as you can see, apart from uh, Africa, uh, for well-known problems, we have uh, uh, an almost complete coverage. Uh, of, there are some countries in South America where uh, probably we have uh, uh, people active, but they're not yet members, but we uh, warmly invite everyone that is interested in LibreOffice and contributing to the project to become a member. It is important because the, the wider the audience, uh, the wider the number of people that can uh, uh, decide about the direction of the foundation, uh, the better the foundation will be. And this is a map of the people that are here today. Uh, as you can see, we, we have people from all continents and uh, I would like to especially thank the people that have, uh, uh, have been flying from uh, far away. Uh, there is people from North America, South America, there are people from South Africa and uh, from several countries in, uh, in Asia. And they have uh, probably spent one day by just by traveling to Oros and uh, uh, to attend the conference. And uh, I think it is important to thank all of you because you're contributing to the conference and you're contributing to the success of this event. And now let's look quickly at what has happened since last year conference in Bern that was in September, so it's more or less the last 12 months. Uh, First thing uh, we did, uh, the TDF uh, at the end of, uh, in early October 2014, uh, became a member of the o uh, Open Source Business Alliance. Uh, it's a mainly German, uh, but I think open to non-Germans as well, uh, organization uh, that uh, wants to help uh, the presence and introduction of open source in businesses, and we are a member of this association. Uh, the, the, the Open Source Business Alliance, for instance, in the past has contributed to the improvement of the filters to write uh, the uh, non-standard uh, Office OpenXML uh, uh, files, which are still quite used, unfortunately, uh, quite used around the world. Uh, I say non-standards because they do not correspond to the ISO standard. So a standard is a standard if it's applied. Uh, not being applied, this is not a standard. Uh, it's easy. Uh, then we have, uh, we, we have uh, uh, CIB, uh, the German company from Munich, uh, based in headquarters in Munich, it's not just from Munich, uh, that has become a member of the advisory board. And uh, it is, of course, it's in addition to the previous member. So uh, just to remember that uh, we, we have uh, other companies like Collabora, Red Hat, Google, Suze, uh, Lanido, uh, we have Studio Storti, and we have uh, um, AMD, Intel, uh, we have the Saudi Arabian government, uh, we have the French, uh, MIMO, uh, part of the uh, advisory board. Uh, we have Free Software Foundation, uh, um, Software in the Public Interest PI in the States. Uh, uh, so the, the advisory board represents a, a wide, uh, the wide origins of our community. And uh, then uh, the city of Munich. And uh, uh, I think it is quite important because there have been uh, speculations about the city of Munich uh, in the media and the fact that the city of Munich is a member of the advisory board of the Document Foundation says it all uh, because it says that the city is still committed uh, in uh, free software and of course is still using free software in uh, their infrastructure. Then in uh, 
probably around uh, April, May, we had a nice surprise uh, because the uh, future of open source survey, this is not run by us, it's run by uh, uh, Black Duck uh, in the States, uh, but has been uh, the, the, the people that have participated to, the, to this uh, survey are worldwide. And uh, we uh, discovered that uh, the, the, the participants of the survey have uh, elected LibreOffice as one of the most valuable open source projects. This was not on a suggested list of, uh, of software, was on a free declaration by people. So that I think is uh, rather significant that uh, a rather large number of people, they, they were over 1,300 participants, uh, which is not a huge sample, but is uh, quite a representative one, have decided uh, uh, to list LibreOffice together with projects that are more on the infrastructure, like uh, uh, OpenStack, uh, Docker, uh, with Drupal, and ahead uh, of Linux and Ubuntu. I mean, I don't think that this is a, a real list, uh, so we, don't, we, we shouldn't look at real numbers, but it's important that LibreOffice has been featured there. In terms of um, uh, development numbers, uh, these are the number of code commits uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on LibreOffice. Of course, the, if, you, if you look at it with a, uh, with a, a tricky eye, you can say that there has been a decrease, but I think that if you look at the reality, this is 1,000, and this is 1,250, which means that we have regularly, over the last 24 months, and I can tell you even before, over 1,000 commit per month, uh, uh, from uh, a diverse base, there is not a single company contributing to LibreOffice, as everyone knows. So it's uh, uh, having this stability on a uh, on a diverse development base, I think is a great achievement. And if we look at the number of uh, people contributing each month, uh, the, the red line tells you the yearly average. So as we can see, we have always been uh, between uh, 300 and 350. So this the yearly average is not, the, 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 this scale is the monthly, so you see that we can say that we are almost always over 80. Uh, there are months where we have been over 100, but what is important is that on a yearly basis we are uh, around 300. And uh, if you look at the latest annual report from Microsoft, uh, it declares 320 developers on uh, Microsoft Office. Which means, it, of course, it doesn't, it's not comparing Apple with Apples, but we are more or less on the same scale, which I think is rather important if we think that, the, let's say, our roots or our, uh, our roots in open office uh, were around 100. So we have tripled more or less the number of developers that are active on a yearly basis. This, of course, is not thanks to myself because I don't develop. So it's, <laughs> as everyone knows, and everyone is thankful because I could destroy the code with just one commit. Uh, this is the road to LibreOffice 5.0. It's just to remember that over five years now, because we we will celebrate our fifth year next Monday. Uh, over five years, we have been able, or better, developers have been able to maintain a, a constant flow of releases. These are major releases, of course, then each major release at, at, at several minor releases. But I think it is important if you look at January, June, February, August, February, July, January, July, January, August. It's really quite stable, it's really predictable. I think this is one of the reasons why there is a growing interest around LibreOffice in terms of uh, enterprise adoptions, because you can work on this schedule and you can reasonably uh, decide about the timing of your deployment, because you already know when the next major release will be, and you can, make, you can program uh, your uh, internal deployment. 
always remembering, uh, I have to explain this slide, always remembering that we maintain two branches. One uh, we, that we call fresh is the 5.0.2 that will be released today. Uh, that is uh, for, we think, individual deployment. Uh, unsupported in the sense that there is not enterprise support behind this. Uh, uh, just because uh, it's the newest one, we want to test it by using uh, with our uh, technology enthusiast that Michael likes as a description and uh, early adopters. But we, for deploy massive deployments, so enterprise deployment, deployment to the public administration, we still suggest the 4.4 branch because there are LTS options available, which are important, of course, and uh, there is professional support provided by certified individuals. So it has to be rather clear that if we suggest uh, the deployment of LibreOffice uh, in a massive, uh, in an enterprise, in a large organization, we have to suggest the 4.4, the uh, not the 5.0. The 5.0 is too risky. Probably in two or three months, 5.0 will be stable enough uh, to be suggested for enterprise de deployment as well. And uh, with this one, uh, of course, we have uh, the announcement of LibreOffice 5.0, which has been uh, in uh, early August. Uh, funny enough, Microsoft decided uh, to announce uh, Windows 10, uh, the day that we originally decided to announce uh, LibreOffice 5, and has announced Office 16 yesterday. Uh, being rather old, I don't believe in coincidence anymore, and I think that these guys are looking at our schedule with uh, increasing interest, which is good because they fear us, uh, because otherwise they will not make the schedule on our schedule. A couple of numbers on the 5.0 announcement. Of course, these are not numbers that have a meaning in the sense that they do not re represent downloads, they do not represent installs, they just represent the growing interest around the announcement. This is the spike that we got on, on August 5 in the number of visits to the website. We usually have around 2,500. We got 25,000 in one day. This is just to show the interest. It's not downloads, it's not installs, it's not how people decided uh, about the product. It's just interest in the announcement. Okay. That's the blog. The blog. Just There is a blog, yes. The blog. No, it's no, not no, a no, website, no, sorry. The, blog. the website is a couple of order magnitude. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, if we look at donations, uh, this is August, uh, this is the month of August. Of course, donations are a percentage of the uh, downloads, uh, no, of course, not anyone that everyone that downloads uh, decided to donate, but this was our best month ever. We started to count donations. Uh, each each uh, brick uh, is one day of donation, and of course, this, uh, this is the month. This was our best month, and probably oh, September, which is not on over, uh, will be our second or third, which means that. The interest on the 5.0 is not just has not just been a spike, but is maintaining. And uh, if we look at the at Google Trends, and here I of course I uh, to, to have a, a comparison, I, I I compare that with OpenOffice because we all know that we started with a huge brand awareness problem. This is uh, how LibreOffice grew, and this is the projection. Of course, the projection is a Google algorithm, uh, don't take it for granted. But if we look at the last uh, 90 days, this is uh, what happened. We were close behind, now we are, cl we are close ahead. Uh, this is not to say that OpenOffice has problems, but uh, this is to say that after five years, we, over we have overcome, at least uh, in, Google, in Google searches, the brand awareness problem that we used to have. If uh, the, I, I could show you uh, the numbers about the uh, news search, 
we are ahead uh, since uh, uh, 2012. So, which means that there is a there, there has always been a higher interest in LibreOffice than in OpenOffice during the last three years. And now I leave the stage to Michael for the... Thank you! Thank you! Ah, all of you. So, I was... Oh, no. <laughs> I was up extremely late last night trying to show you why 5.0 is awesome and all the good work you have done uh, in the last year. So, uh, none of the credit is due to me. Um, and the problem is there's just so much of it. So, you know, the idea is that I can put everyone's name on the slide in the room and lots of other people. Um, but we're just not going to get through it in, in the time. So instead, I haven't put anyone's names in. And I would encourage you to go to uh, talks. There's lots of talks by people here that have, have done the work. Go and listen to them. Go and uh, see who did it with them. And, uh, and so, so we're going to go for a death by bullets. Uh, and we're just going to have lots of them. So this is what we've done in the last year. Um, and some of it will be meaningless to you. Hopefully some of it is more meaningful. So a whole uh, office suite is built on a very old uh, toolkit. Um, called VCL. And in this year, we've just done some amazing work with it. We've finally finished switching our whole user interface to new um, XML layout uh, stuff, and, and it got just much cleaner, a better uh, look. If you're a translator, perhaps you remember the bad old days of checking every dialogue to make sure the strings didn't overlap and the buttons weren't sitting on top of strings. You don't need to do that anymore. Um, the main loop has been rewritten from being this clunky, awful thing to being something relatively sensible. Um, we're starting to use modern hardware for rendering. You know, the OpenGL cross-platform API is, is amazingly useful, and we're really uh, starting to do that. We've fixed a whole lot of stupid stuff in the life cycle, and we're finally working on modern Linux uh, desktops. In fact, beyond the bleeding edge, we're working. Um, so that's great. Code quality. You know, we, we've inherited five years ago this huge code base of, um, I think that our, um, our friends at Microsoft call it a deep, legacy rich code base, you know. And I think our code base is getting less legacy rich, you know. It's starting to be modern and, and beautiful. You know, we moved to C11 and there's, there's some great big wins there. Um, we're starting, we've got coverity issues to zero, so there's some fantastic work there, um, led by Red Hat. Just get this to zero, right? You know, so it is, as far as we can tell, there are no Coverage issues, approximately none. Crash testing, we're systematically checking that it's working well um, and doing that regularly you know, on, on, on new hardware. Loads of extra unit tests just this year, 1,500 extra commits, uh, improving and adding unit tests so we can be more and more sure uh, the quality is improving. Uh, Jenkins, whole massive infrastructure set up to make sure that every commit that goes in is passing all the tests and is compiling all, all the platforms to accelerate the pace of what we're doing. Um, by by set, allowing us to find what commit caused the regression, um, moving broader out of Linux into Windows and Mac. New platforms, Windows 64, some great work um, taking that to uh, the Windows 64 platform, high DPI so that you can see your UI on the Mac without a magnifying glass, you know, so you don't have to ship the uh, special lens with it. So beautiful, beautiful UIs there. Um, sandboxing Mac builds so that we can actually you know, deploy these without uh, so much security uh, warning problems. Performance improvements all across the board, you know, loading documents, saving the mail merging, loading images, spreadsheet calculation, charts, rendering, indexing of documents when LibreOffice is used to, to do that in big uh, document systems. Interoperability, so I mean, there's just some fantastic work in Calc here improving one of the last gaps. You know, this, this table structure thing, one of the, the last big big holes, and new formulae constantly keeping up uh, with where we need to be, um, interoperating with SharePoint. Again, this is all in the last year, right? So SharePoint 2010 to 13, OneDrive connectors, loads, loads more interoperability work. It's, it's lots of little bits hard to draw together. Document liberation, another awesome, awesome project, starting to uh, you know, deliver some real, real cool stuff. You know, if you're a recovering Mac user, you know, you've discovered software freedom and you've moved to Linux or something. You want to rescue your data, you know? So these are the modern, the modern holes in the ground today. You know, proprietary formats are a disaster area, um, but people keep creating them. And, uh, you know, this creates a, a problem for the future. And, and luckily, document liberation is, you know, proactively rescuing your data. 
you know, so it's, it's not just the Claris draw on a Mac draft from, from years ago you can get your files from, but also the, the, the latest disaster areas of the future are, are being fixed in advance. You know, we're, we're, we're pre-mending the brokenness, uh, which is good. Um, the Adobe PageMaker, just some great, great work going on there. And improving lots of the existing filters for, you know, I mean, like Microsoft works. You know, like, <laughs> you know, just getting better data out of this stuff. And publishing, just some you know, exciting uh, things there. LibreOffice Kit, so we've also done a huge amount of work to make LibreOffice reusable. So you can wrench the heart out of it and put it somewhere else, you know, on your mobile phone, just a huge amount of work there. Um, you know, funded by, by various people to, to, to make this as I mean, you know, a great story of diversity, lots of different players putting money and investment in to get this working uh, nicely on Android. And we have now an editor a year ago, uh, we didn't at all. So Android improved a lot. And again, built, built around this idea of a, a core of LibreOffice that can be reused. Uh, LibreOffice Online, you'll see a lot of things about that at this conference. Check it out. It's basically using the same approach as was used on Android. Uh, this LibreOffice Git core and reapplying that. So some great stuff there. And I'll just finish with uh, this slide, really. I mean, one of the things I'm excited about, and hopefully in 5.0 we can focus more, more love on, is, is the user experience, you know? Uh, we have now a very beautiful, fast-performing, lovely, you know, sexy, increasingly clean code base, um, but I think there's so much we can do in the user experience domain. So if I can encourage you not to fix low-level stuff, but to fix high-level stuff, you know, make it easier to use, um, so in this last year, new Breeze theme, um, as if I can update, we, we had competitions for new templates, which we've shared. I mean, I, I could read the bullet points to you. I mean, there's just lots and lots of little things. User experience is often um, thought of as just a series of paper cuts. You know, if you get enough paper cuts, you, you know, your limb is sawn off, you know, your, your hands fall off. So, uh, you know, let, let's try and stop people injuring themselves in lots of little ways uh, with LibreOffice. And, and there's so much more we can do. Um, so this is really just a subset uh, of detail that went in from so, so many people uh, out there in the community. I'd just love to, to you know, thank you guys for showing up, for contributing, for translating, uh, for putting code in, for you know, just being involved in the ecosystem, making it richer and stronger. You rock. Thank you. My side. Um, thanks so much for, for those my slides and, and sharing what's been going on uh, behind the scenes in the code. Um, in in Torsten's advice, in like to his speeches, we have heard about the, the strong base of contributors to LibreOffice, uh, what's going on, um, how people are contributing. And actually, I would like to introduce you to a couple of, of more people um, who are with TDF to show what we're doing. So you know the conductor and during the conference to align what um, kind of things they have been doing, and just use this one. So uh, first let me introduce you, I guess most of you already know her, Sophie, you can quickly stand up. So, first of all, thank you so much. Um, Sophie was, um, together with the, the local team who's done an amazing job, as you all can see, has been running the, um, since, um, for a couple of years already, the, the leader of this conference, from the TDF side, so that's that's one of our working areas. Then um, we have uh, a lot of people from the native language community who took a rather long travel here, which I really appreciate. And uh, Sophie basically is acting as, as a gateway for all those native language communities trying to pull the strings on documentation, localization, um, QA. Um, anyone who ever uh, asked for, for some travel refunds will most likely have uh, had contact with Sophie and a couple of other things. So yeah, that's that's Sophie. So if you if you're interested in what she does and would like to exchange your thoughts, she's around during during the full conference. Then we have we have Itabo. We have Sika Burton obviously. So as you can see Itabo um, is our guy for for marketing. So actually he's the, the nice man whenever you download LibreOffice and you, you see this well you can support us with a donation. He's the first picture that, that we see, so <laughs> it's, it's uh, Italo asking, thank you for that, and you could support us, and that seems to work quite well. <laughs> so um, Italo is doing a lot in, in uh, marketing, we try to build up the, the local marketing to encourage the, the native language communities together with Sophie. 
um, to interact with marketing, to get um, contact with journalists. I think we even I think about offering a uh, media training during yeah. this uh, conference for those who would like to get a bit skilled and get some, some more insight in how to deal with journalists and um, how, to, how to act there. Ito is your guy. Um, Ito also has been working hard on the certification program that's in place. So um, thank you very much, Ito, for that. Then, Kloff. <laughs> So he actually has a real first name, we all know him by Kloff, it's, it's Christian, so for those who are curious. Um, actually, Kloff is the one whenever you download LibreOffice um, and get your, your final build on the machine and use it. It's a lot of, of merits uh, are on him for um, build, creating the final build together with some other uh, volunteers to um, identify if there are any last blockers for distributing them uh, on our service so they are available worldwide. Um, basically, Cloud is everywhere where he's needed, which is in so many uh, places I actually wonder when, when he finds uh, sleep at night. So um, he's around for the Silver Stripe CMS whenever uh, native language communities translate their website. It's Cloud, so he's in, in a lot of things. Um, so thanks a lot for all the work. and. Same as for the others, if there are any, any questions you'd like to get in touch with him, he's around during all the conference. And we have Alex. <laughs> so, Alex, Alex has the, 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 the poor fate of being the infra guy. Those guys you mostly notice when things are not working. So, Alex is working hard uh, behind the scenes to provide the, the infrastructure to keep the services running. All the mailing lists, the website, the download infrastructure and all those sorts of things that are used in the Garrett instance, which even I understand is a rather a crucial component of, of our ecosystem. So Alex is driving that, and um, like with other areas, uh, Infra always is uh, looking for volunteers or contributors, and I think we also have a talk to, to outline a bit on what's, what's going on, so if you're interested in joining the Infra folks, um, Alex is your guy, uh, talk to him. Dan Robinson. <laughs> So Robinson is our QA engineer. Robinson is uh, the guy uh, looking for QA, triage bugs, um, taking care of the Bugzilla instance that we have been running since I think generally it is, um, trying to modify it in a way that we can make best use of it. Um, he runs a couple of calls, I think most notably, notably the, the uh, QA call where he's constantly looking for volunteers, tries to write documentation how to get people into QA and support us in the, in the efforts of uh, improving the quality of LibreOffice. Uh, likewise, Robinson is around for, for the full conference, so if you're interested in, in QA and have an out with that, um, give him a poke, um, I'd like to, to have you. Yeah, and um, a couple of words from me, you see, I, 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 I talk a lot about it. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, I try to keep all of that together by, by some means, try to see that, that things are working, lots of, of, of legal and administrative stuff that uh, is required for a foundation of that size. And um, as, as closing words, it's, it's pure joy being with all of you and, and seeing, um, it, it's, we all work rather hard and once a year we are here together seeing the, the, the joy and motivation of people and all of that coming together, that the, the achievements like the slides that we have seen and, and what, what all this happening. So um, quite happy to be here. So thank you everyone, everyone who, who contributes. Um, I guess I have over to Italo now, so we don't. Sure. I think do you have some more yes, slides. So yeah. I have over to Italo now. If there are any questions on those topics, let me know. Happy to talk to you around all the conference. Thanks a lot, and Italo. So the last part is about the announcement that we are uh, uh, we have been making around the conference. Uh, the first one is going to be 5.0.2, uh, which is going to be released in uh, one hour, thirty minutes, more or less. Uh, as soon as I get hold of my PC again, because I have to fire off the the press release. Uh, then uh, yesterday we have announced our merchandising shop. Is, uh, is not managed by the Document Foundation, it's managed by a third party company, uh, and uh, TDF gets uh, a percentage, a small percentage out of uh, every purchase. 
uh, we have a few design, uh, the first basic ones, everyone is invited, as I wrote uh, on the blog post yesterday, if you have ideas about new gadgets, if you have ideas about new designs, if you have ideas about uh, uh, new kind of uh, garments that should be on the shop, send uh, myself or Sophia an email, uh, we will uh, get in touch with you, we will uh, make sure that uh, your contribution is reflected into the shop. Uh, it will take a little bit of time, of course, uh, we, we have to make sure that the production, that, that the design is compatible with the production, but then uh, we are happy to grow, uh, to have the community grow the number of design. This is just the basic ones. Uh, don't be shy, make your proposals. Second one, uh, we have uh, a new company in the advisory board, uh, it's a Russian company, uh, the name is Rusbitek, but it's best known for uh, uh, Linux distribution that is used uh, in uh, Russia, uh, in uh, several, I would say, in a growing number of uh, public administrations. So uh, the, the website is in Russian, uh, so it's difficult to understand, but I think that you get this one. So the... Uh, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the, the Linux distribution is called Astra Linux, uh, is available also in English, if someone wants to have a look at it, it's available in English as well. It's rather difficult to find on the website because the website is just in Russian. So, but anyway, if you dig a little bit you can find it. And the last announcement has been a few days ago, and uh, I can tell you that Sonia is on the flight to Oros now, is uh, from between Stansted and Oros at the moment. So when Sonia will come in this afternoon, I invite everyone to uh, congratulate with her because uh, uh, we have announced, of course, has been a community effort. Uh, this is uh, a general, uh, is the guy responsible for 150,000 desktop in the Italian defense and uh, they will be migrating to LibreOffice by the end of next year, which is a rather challenging uh, effort. Uh, they, uh, as I was telling yesterday during the, uh, during the marketing workshop, during the, the uh, NLP workshop, uh, the fantastic uh, result is that we have not been approaching them, they have approached us. Uh, as, um, I, I, as you could see from the, 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 the sweater I was uh, wearing before, but you have four guys there that are for the, the uniform. Uh, if you can stand up and, see, and, and show the Libre Italia logo on your shoulders. Uh, these are the Libre Italia guys. And, uh, they, they have approached the, the Italian Association. Uh, because the Italian Association is made by, uh, let's say, several crazy people, and Sonia and myself are probably the craziest, uh, we make a huge amount of noise in the market, and we are so visible that even the army has written us an email. And uh, you can imagine the surprise of myself and Sonia when uh, we saw the email uh, with a signature, Generale Camillo Sileo, uh, Capo di Stato Maggiore, which means uh, the top body in the defense. Uh, but as that was not the first one that we got from uh, such a large organization, uh, we hope to be able to announce the others one uh, soon. Uh, actually, the first one, we believed it was a joke. Uh, when we got this one, we didn't believe it was a joke. We, we, we thought it was for real. I think it's very important because that is a, not only the second largest migration to LibreOffice, uh, it's the first one where people looked just at LibreOffice. There's no uh, switch between, uh, there, there's no legacy, so there's no people going through Apache OpenOffice or OpenOffice. They, they decided about LibreOffice and they went. They are going straight from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice. And uh, with this is all, uh, it's uh, of course the, the 
merit is, is for the community, it's not just, I mean, the Italian community is the front end of the entire community in this case. Uh, because we speak Italian, they need to speak Italian. You can imagine, uh, already Italians are not famous for being English speakers, uh, but in addition, you can imagine 150,000 people scattered around the entire country. Uh, you have to speak the local language, but it is because there is a community behind uh, that we have been chosen. We, we think uh, that the work of the community is extremely important. And the first thing that we, we told to these guys was uh, either you engage with the community or the migration will not work because the community is the only guarantee that you have uh, that people is committed to make this a success. And I think this is uh, only one opportunity of the many that we can have worldwide. And I warmly invite you, everyone, uh, to mimic what we did in Italy, uh, because uh, this proves that we can be successful in extremely large migration, not only in small ones which are challenging as well but are easier to reach and with this one i finished these are our emails but i think we are around until uh, uh, saturday all of us so uh, you have plenty of time to poke us uh, if you have questions uh, if you want uh, slides uh, to support your efforts uh, and uh, if you want to know more about the the community and the LibreOffice project. Thank you, everyone. I think that we have a, a break now, live. Yeah, yep, the, the program says we have a break yeah. now until... So the program the says we, are, we have a break, and we probably are think even we, on time. We are more than on time. I think that the, the next lecture will be check. Next lecture will be 30, that's your song. Okay, so... Let's gather here again at 11.20 because we have to start at 11.30. So you have 10 minutes to sit down and uh, because, uh, and uh, sorry, just a final comment. Uh, the, the, the way we, uh, you know, I'm Italian, my name is Italo, so it's, uh, you cannot uh, uh, exchange myself for any, any other country in the world. Let's say that Ita Italy is not known for organization. <laughs> and I will stop here on the comment. Uh, the way that Libre Italia is organized is that we, because of this, uh, let's say, perception, we are sitting on a pole on the North Pole, so we are not than anyone else. When the generals are asking, I mean the generals, because now we receive regularly emails from generals. If they ask something at 7 o'clock in the evening, they usually have the answer by 8 o'clock in, in that same evening, not even the, the, the morning after. And this is one of the things that have gained the confidence, because they've always got, apart when, when we had to write documents, because you, you need some, some time to write documents. But when the answer was, uh, can we schedule trainings? We will start training them on October 15. Can we schedule training? Uh, we, we really replied in a matter of minutes. And I think uh, uh, this is something that is important for us uh, as, a, as a community, because we have a confidence problem uh, against large corporation. I am not saying that large corporation behave better than us, but they are thought to behave better than us. And uh, if we show that we behave better than corporation, we can really win uh, on large uh, uh, challenges like the one that we are running now in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but they can go, I mean. I said,